Okay, we're going to identify the following for each of these elements, the group and family name, the block location, the number of valence electrons, the method for obtaining a full octet, if applicable, whether or not it's a metal, non-metal, or metalloid, and we're going to describe each of their properties. So we'll start with arsenic. This one right here. So arsenic is located right here on the periodic table. And so you'll notice that it's in row number four and it's in column number one, two, three, four, five. So it's in the fifth group. So it's in group five, which is known as the nitrogen family. It's block location, it's in the P block. And because it's in group five, it has five valence electrons. In order to obtain a full octet, it would want to gain three electrons. And it would get it a charge of negative three by doing that. And so if it gains three electrons, that's what's going to give it its full octet of eight electrons. It's considered a non-metal because of its location. It's on the right side of the staircase. I'm sorry. It's considered a metalloid. I don't have my staircase drawn on this periodic table, uh, but the staircase is here. And you can see that arsenic is sitting on the staircase that makes it a metalloid. Therefore, its properties are, it's a semiconductor, it's a brittle solid, and that's pretty much all of them that you need for a metalloid. Okay, next is cadmium. That's gonna be this one. Cadmium is located here. It's group or family name, it's in the transition metals. It's in the D block. Its number of valence is not gonna be applicable because it has varying valence. Therefore, its method for obtaining a full octet is not something that we're gonna worry about. You only do that with groups one through eight, the main group elements. However, we can state that it is a metal and therefore it has the properties of a metal, which means they are good conductors or cadmium is a good conductor of heat and electricity. It's um, hard, strong, and dense. It has a high melting point and it's shiny or lustrous. Rubidium would be next. Rubidium is located here in group one which means that it's in the alkali earth metals. I'm sorry, the alkali metals, not earth, just alkali metals. Elements in this block, this group are located in the S block. They have one valence electron and they're gonna lose that one valence, lose one electron in order to obtain its octet of eight electrons. We'll see later with the Bohr models exactly why does losing an electron allow, cause an element to have an octet. Um, it's, whether or not it's a metal, non-metal, or metalloid, it is a metal, and therefore it has the properties of metals, but being an alkaline earth metal, well, let's be a little more specific. They're very soft metals. They're highly reactive metals. As a matter of fact, they're the most reactive metals, and they're gonna be silvery in appearance. Bromine, is located here. It's number 35 and so it's in group 7 and that group name is the halogens. It's located in the P block. It has seven valence and so it will gain one electron in order to achieve a full octet and that's going to give it a charge of negative one when it gains that one electron. Um, for the one prior to I didn't state that, however, because it'll lose one electron, it'll get a charge of plus one. <clears throat> Back to bromine. Um, it's a, considered a non-metal, given its location. And let's be specific to halogens. It's a non-metal, therefore it's a poor conductor of heat and electricity. Um, it's also going to be a highly reactive non-metal because remember the halogens are the most reactive non-metals. Okay, next is oxygen and oxygen is here, element number eight, found in group number six. So it's in the group family, the oxygen family, which is convenient since we're dealing with oxygen. 
So we call it the oxygen family. It happens to be in the P block. It has six valence electrons. And so if it gains two, it'll get a charge of negative two and that's what will give it its octet. It's considered a non-metal, which means it has the typical properties of a non-metal. It's a poor conductor of heat and electricity and it's gonna be considered um, very brittle. It's um, not metallic. Uranium is going to be located in the actinide series down here, which means it's radioactive for starters. So we'll say it's in the actinides or actinoid, as it's sometimes called. It's in the F block. Valence and method of obtaining a full octet are not going to be uh, applicable here. Um, it is, however, considered a metal, and again, it's radioactive and will exhibit um, typical metallic properties. Last is germanium, which is GE, and again, it's going to be on the staircase. Here's our staircase one more time. So it is um, located in group number four, which is the carbon family. It's in the P block. It has four valence because it's in group number four. And this can actually do one of two things. It could gain four electrons or it could lose four electrons. And that being said, it actually will do neither. It's going to typically want to share electrons. And we'll find that out more later when we get to chapter six, which is bonding. So um, to get its full octet, it's going to end up sharing four electrons to get eight valence. Okay. It is a, a non-metal, I'm sorry, it's a metalloid because it's on the staircase, so metalloid. And therefore it has properties such as a metalloid, meaning they are semiconductors and it's a brittle solid.